Welcome to the Jeffrey Stevens Protocol. My name is Rob. Uh, I will introduce myself in a moment. Uh, let's first see what uh, we are going to cover. Um, first, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, I'm going to talk also a little bit about uh, Jeffrey Stevens, uh, the creator of this protocol. Uh, why I use this protocol and why it's a good protocol to use. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the basic thoughts about the protocol, so how it is built. I'm going to talk about the 10 steps. It's a 10 step protocol. Um, I'm going to give little information about every step. Of course, I can't teach you the entire protocol on uh, one hour and 50 minutes. Uh, but one step of the protocol, the boilerplate, I will teach entirely because I, it's a very important step that I use in any occasion. Even when I do another kind of session, uh, we also in our hypnosis center, we use the virtual gastric band, Sheila Granger, but I also use the boilerplate in it. When I do street hypnosis, I use the boilerplate. So I will explain the entire step of the boilerplate. Um, then we're going to do a little Q&A, and if we still have time, I uh, will do a full session with somebody who has something to fix or nothing to fix, uh, just have a good feeling <laughs> or something. No, so when we have a volunteer, I can do uh, a full session. Um, you will uh, understand my native language is not English, so whenever there is something not clear, just raise your hand and uh, I will try to explain it in proper English. So, um, who am I? Uh, my name is uh, Rob, I'm from Belgium, a um, very little country in uh, Europe. Uh, I'm the own, owner of the Hypnosis Center in Belgium, but actually I have a background in entertainment. So, um, I worked uh, in entertainment for many years. I had my own company, I still have my, that company. Um, and uh, the thing that I did most was clowning. So, uh, I've been on stages many times, but with those big shoes. <laughs> um, balloon bowling, stilt walking, all those things. Um, but I uh, got really tired of performing for children, and I really wanted to do something for adults. So I had two choices. I could become a stripper, <laughs> or a hypnotist. <laughs> so I, ch I can't sing, so <laughs> that's why I chose for hypnosis. So I had never had the intention to become a therapist. Uh, because my view of a therapist was like somebody um, lying on the couch and a therapist is talking for hours and the client has to come back many times. That was my view of a therapist. I was totally not interested in becoming a therapist. Um, I learned hypnosis uh, only for doing uh, stage shows and street hypnosis. Now one of the problems in Belgium is that uh, all entertainment hypnosis is forbidden. It's a very old wall, nobody acts on it, but actually it is forbidden. Um, one other problem in Belgium is the two language uh, system. So there's the corporate market is uh, really slow uh, for hypnosis because most of the companies, they expect you to do a show in two languages. And I did it when I was a clown, I did shows in two languages. But first, I can't be funny in French. And second, you have to say everything twice. And you can't do a hypnosis show when you have to say everything twice. It's not gonna. It's not good for the tempo of the show. It's not good for the for the people uh, watching the show, enjoying the show. So um, I learned hypnosis, and I uh, get in contact with other hypnotists in Belgium. And one day, one guy called me and he says, "I bought DVDs from Jeffrey Stevens, and it's really something for you. You really have to watch them." I say, "Yeah." Is it street hypnosis? Is it show hypnosis? No, it's a, it's a therapy. I so said, I don't want to do therapy. And I said, yeah, but this, this is no, uh, no bullshit hypnosis. That's how we call it. That's something really for you. So I said, okay, I will uh, have a look at these DVDs. Uh, it was the, the Jeffrey Stevens weekend workshop. Uh, and after one hour, I was already sold. Uh, I told the rest of my stuff, don't bother me to, to, today because I really want to see these DVDs. Uh, and at the end I said, hmm, this is a way I can do therapy myself. It's like, it's, a, it's like an act. It's, it's, it's hypnosis uh, with instant inductions, uh, talking directly to the subconscious mind. Short uh, sessions, like 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so 
let's give it a try. So I learned the entire system and I started working with it. Uh, I created a little website and my goal was to have like two to three sessions a week because at that time I was really already convinced that you can't become a good hypnotist when you don't do hypnosis. That's something I say to every student I have in Belgium or wherever in the world, do it. Don't go from, from one training to another and another training and another training without hypnotizing people. It's the only work, uh, way you can learn hypnosis is by doing it. So I, I decided let me do some therapy this time because I already knew I didn't have a gig every week to do street hypnosis or show hypnosis. My goal was two or three sessions. So after three months, I had a full time, a full, fully booked schedule in uh, hypnotherapy. So after a while, I started uh, getting in touch with Jeffrey because one of the things I was not sure of, the, there's also a, a way to get people uh, to, to lose some weight. But of course you don't get the feedback immediately. When stop smoking, you know they're a non-smoker or they stay a smoker. But with the, with the weight loss, after two, three weeks doing this, so man, is this working? Because it's, it's so so short session, is this really working? So I was in contact with Jeffrey and said, no, no worries, you will see the results. Uh, I was in contact with a guy in the Netherlands who already used this protocol. He said, no worries, you will see the results. Like four months later, I was uh, doing an intake uh, with the lady and I asked her, how do you know me? Oh, my friend was here and she lost already so many kilograms, uh, I said, oh, and in my cell I was thinking, hmm, this is working. <laughs> that, so I, I got convinced as well, because that's all, uh, also really important, the mindset of the hypnotist, when you don't believe what you're doing, it's not going to work. So um, uh, Jeffrey came over uh, to Europe to do a training. Um, after the second time, he asked me to become his trainer uh, in Belgium. Um, and. Uh, I started working with other therapists because I had a full-time schedule um, and I don't like waiting lists. I don't want waiting lists. Uh, for me, when we have a waiting list for 14 days or longer, I ask my therapist to open more days because I don't want a smoker to make an appointment and then he has to wait for three months. Because three months later, his mindset can be totally different. He could have a, a divorce he could have uh, other problems, uh, more stress. And stop smoking is not the most important thing in his mind three months later. So I don't want my clients that they have to wait. So um, I trained uh, six other therapists, uh, not all together of course, every year I had a new one. Uh, two of my therapists are, are here also. Uh, and we, we are working in three different cities. Uh, my goal is to travel the world and to keep uh, Jeffrey's stuff alive. Because I really, uh, I'm, I'm, I know it has value. My, te my uh, therapy center in, in uh, Belgium, uh, we use in 80% of the sessions, we use the Jeffrey Stevens protocol. So uh, it works and I want to keep it alive. Uh, who was Jeffrey? Um, he started hypnotizing when he was like 12 years old. He got in touch with hypnosis uh, by uh, his mother. Um, he lived in Missouri and he created this protocol uh, out trial and error. He was doing sessions and you know, oh, this is working. And at the end, he had a 10 step protocol. And the good thing of having a protocol is that you always know what to do. Whenever somebody enters my, my, my therapy room or whenever I hypnotize somebody, even on the street, I have a structure. I don't use all the 10 steps every time when I hypnotize, but I have a structure. So I know I don't have to think anymore what I'm, what I'm going to do. And that's uh, really important. And then you have time to concentrate on your client. And that's uh, also a good thing. Um, he fine-tuned it over the years, of course. And he also started traveling the world teaching hypnotherapists. And a lot of those uh, hypnotherapists, they were very seasoned hypnotherapists. They changed their way of working immediately after the training with Jeffrey. Uh, I also uh, I did a training uh, in February in uh, Hull, hosted by Chile Granger, and also there there were a lot of uh, hypnotherapists. They were in the business way much longer than I am, but they changed the way of uh, working. Maybe not for every topic, but uh, I know uh, I met a few here uh, also, and they say after your training, I start doing every smoker with your system. 
So, and, and every time that uh, somebody comes in the office, uh, yeah, they know what to do without the script. And that's really important. That's uh, what I'm going to talk next. Jeffrey uh, sadly died in uh, 2014 after having uh, diagnosed with uh, liver cancer for only 14 days. Uh, so it went uh, really, really, really fast. Yeah. Uh, the family gave uh, the rights to me and, and to other trainers uh, to uh, keep the legacy alive. So, Okay, uh, so why this protocol? First, we create effective and lasting changes to it. Yeah? Um, and one of the most important things for me is that I don't need to know much about the issue. The only two questions that we ask our clients is, can you describe your problem in two words? And give me your goal, or whatever you want, also in two words. I know it's sometimes really difficult for people to describe their problem in only two words, but one of the things I don't want, um, somebody coming in my therapy room and starting telling their entire life and why they think they have the problem. Yeah? I don't know if you know, the, it's, a, it's a comedy a video quite old uh, called Stop It. Yeah? So the ones who know it, this, I, I show this video every time in my trainings. Yeah? Because sometimes that's all, the only thing that we're doing. Actually talking to the subconscious mind and say stop it. Yeah? Uh, but another important sentence in that uh, video is we don't go there. For the guys who know the video. Yeah? Um, and that's something I have in my mind always. We don't go there. So the moment somebody starts talking to me in a pre-talk and, and explaining the problem and they say, yeah, but I think, and I, I said, stop, I don't need all that information. Because at that time, the client is hypnotizing you and you are not hypnotizing the client anymore. So the only thing I really want to know is what's your problem and what do you want instead? I don't need anything else. So sometimes I know, uh, especially when I have students who are um, new in hypnosis, when I have them in my basic training in Belgium, and they are uh, psychotherapists, they have a problem with it. Because they, their clients expect that they have to tell a story. And then they have to change their mind, that no, I don't want a story anymore. So actually, I'm not interested in what the client thinks about his problem. I only want to know what is the problem and what do you want instead. And that's Okay, uh, in 80% of the cases, one session does the job. To be honest, in the beginning, we really promoted our hypnosis center as a one session thing. Um, and that's part of the success I had in Belgium because I was one of the first um, advertising, like stop smoking, one session. At that time, most of the hypnotherapists in Belgium, they had a, like a five session program to, to stop smoking. Um, and we changed it. Now there are a lot of people uh, doing the same because uh, I think at this time 80% of the uh, hypnotherapists in Belgium are trained by myself. So most of them use the Jeffrey Stevens protocol and they also work with the one session. Now at the hypnosis center in Belgium we are changing it a little bit because a lot of people they think that their problem can't be solved in one session. Actually, we can, but if, if the feeling is, at lunch we had a, we had a chat about it with uh, uh, Candice and uh, Michael, two of my therapists. Um, when the client has a feeling that his problem or her problem is so big that they need more sessions, give them more sessions. Because when their mindset says, I need, my problem is so bad that I need three sessions, okay. Most of the time, it's like, they have a, they have a, a way, a thinking of, oh, I can go back. I, I saw it when, I, uh, when we start doing the virtual gastric band, which is a, a more session uh, program. Sometimes clients need to come and tell about the success they have. And then they know, okay, the hypnotist is there. So whenever I have a problem, I have a second session, I can go there. So we changed it a little bit now, so the moment, uh, I don't do it. I, for me, it's still the one session thing, and 
But I uh, said to all my uh, other therapists, the moment you have a feeling that the client wants to come back, give him uh, a second session. And now we say, okay, two days before that session, if you don't need it, just call us and cancel. You don't have to pay. So they are at ease, they know I can go back, but when they don't need it, they don't have to pay. So that's a little bit a change that we make. Um, for this protocol, you don't need a script. Uh, let me explain that. Of course, it is a scripted protocol. Yes, there are 10 steps, and every step has its wordings. The moment you know that, you don't need a script anymore. For whatever problem, clients are coming. Let me tell a story about that. Um, when I started, I was still working at my home. It was totally unprofessional because it was an entertainment office. Sometimes clients have to come in and walk over the clown shoes and the, the stilts that another artist uh, brought in. But it exploded so so fast that I don't have the time to find uh, an office. Now I have uh, in Arschel where the, our headquarters are. We have a big office with five therapy rooms and all things. Uh, but at that time it was uh, yeah. So and uh, I had a referral client. His colleague made the appointment. She says, okay, I have this guy, a colleague at my work, and he wants to come for a stop smoking session. Okay, I put it in, uh, in my uh, agenda. Actually, most of the time I don't know why they're coming. We never ask at the telephone when they make an appointment, what's your issue? We never ask. But this time I know it was stop smoking. So the client arrived, he was, he was a French-speaking client, but his Dutch was uh, okay, so I did the session in Dutch. And then uh, I said, oh yeah, you were referred by uh, this uh, lady. Uh, you want to, to become a non-smoker? He said, yeah, actually I want to become a non-smoker, but there's another issue I want to work first on. I can't get an erection. There were two things, things very good at that time. First, I don't need a script. Because when I was a scriptist, I had my stop smoking script there, and I'm quite sure you can't fix an erection problem with a stop smoking script. <laughs> Whoever can do this, <laughs> give me the script. <laughs> yeah. So, and the second thing for me was very good that it came out of the blue because I'm quite sure it was my very first months of doing therapy. I'm quite sure if I knew up front that I had to do an erection problem. <laughs> I would have been nervous as hell because I don't have a background in therapy and then I was thinking I have to talk with a man about erection problems and now I was sitting there he said I have an erection problem and I said okay so it was like I, I asked a few questions within the session and a few weeks later I got the feedback that his problem was gone he actually came back for, the, for uh, becoming a non-smoker as well so that's one of the things I already cured uh, issues that I never heard of before. So sometimes I have somebody in my therapy room and they start talking about something, they, they give it a name that I never heard of, and then I go to my office, I go to Wikipedia, I say, oh, that's, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to know the, the background of the problem, I don't need to know a uh, lot of the problem. So the moment they can describe me what their problem is and what they want instead, it's enough. Short sessions between 10 and 15 minutes. Um, when I do a session uh, in Dutch, I'm a very fast speaker. Um, you don't, my students always ask, do we really have to speak so, as fast as you? No, you don't have to, but I'm a fast speaker. Uh, it's better in English and I'm a slower speaker because I have to think. Um, so when I do a stop smoking session, it's like eight minutes from induction to exduction. So, but you can do it at your own tempo, of course. Uh, I always tell my students, uh, don't become Jeffrey Stevens. Don't become me. Take it with you and make it your own. Because when you're just copying somebody and just doing it exactly the same with the exact same words, it's not gonna work. It's because the feeling is not there. It has to become second nature, and you, has to, you have to do it with your own words, with the words that are feels good for you to, um, 
to say. Some basic thoughts. Um, the basic thought about the change work is there is an issue or a problem is a conflict between the conscious and the subconscious mind. So somebody wants some something, but his subconscious mind is not on the job. Huh? Uh, one of the examples I always uh, give is uh, somebody with uh, fear of flying. He really wants to go somewhere far away with his family. His kids want to go somewhere far away. They don't want to go for the 10 time to the Belgian seaside. So, and they don't want to be 24 hours in a bus to Spain. So they really want to fly. And the guy also wants to fly because he wants to please his family. So, on a conscious level, he wants to get in that plane. But the subconscious mind is always telling, no, 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 that's not good for you. The moment he book his ticket, he already gets afraid. So there is a conflict. Yeah. Why do I give this example? I have a friend with fear of flying. His girlfriend has already asked me a few times, can you fix it? Because I really want to go somewhere. He doesn't want to fix it. Because first, he doesn't like to go somewhere. He has this little uh, caravan at the seaside. The only thing he wants to do is to drive up there and smoke some weed. That's the only thing he's interested in. So he has a very good excuse. So people with a problem, but they don't experience it as a problem, you can't help them. My wife is a smoker. Best marketing you have. <laughs> <laughs> a few weeks ago, we left, we left a restaurant, and one of the waiters, he was sitting outside smoking a cigarette. So I went to my pocket for a business card, and then, a few meters after me, I heard the lighter of my wife's cigarette. I said, okay, put it away. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, uh, my wife is Bulgarian. In Bulgaria, you are born with a cigarette. <laughs> it's everybody smoking there. Uh, so, she's been hypnotized by famous hypnotists from all over the world to stop smoking. Every time I invite somebody, now, it, now it's, it's ended, but in the beginning years, I invite somebody and say, oh, I'm going to ask him to make me a non-smoker. Okay, good. See, she's a super, 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 super somnambulist. But she's still a smoker. Because she doesn't want to become a non-smoker. So, even when you have the best subject, when they don't have a conflict, you can't change it. And why did she talk about these different people? Uh, because in the beginning, she thought that hypnosis is like magic. Now she already understands and she says it. I'm not ready for it. Uh, but in the beginning, and that, that's a problem you have sometimes with smokers. They think it's, they gonna do the job. But if they don't have a conflict, you, you can be the best hypnotist in the world, it's not gonna work. You can have the best protocol in the world, in the world it's not gonna work. So that's uh, also something that is important. So actually we want the subconscious mind to do what the conscious mind wants. That's the only thing, that, that's the only job that we have. Convince the subconscious mind to do what the conscious mind wants. Um, so, the moment we have our client hypnotized, we're going to instruct the subconscious mind to make the necessary changes. Uh, first, we're going to, of course, tell the subconscious mind you did a very good job, but now we have some new information. For uh, You can get these slides later. I made PDF file and you can download the slides. So I forgot to tell in the beginning, but you can have. Um, one of the things that is really important, especially with this kind of hypnosis, with direct hypnosis and really fast work, is to convince the subconscious mind of the reasons why the change has to occur. And that's one of the problems why sessions sometimes are not successful or why, why the changes not last. Sometimes, and everybody will experience this, sometimes you have clients and they call you after three weeks. It was very good, the first two weeks, and then everything was back to normal. And the reason that that is ha happening is because we didn't convince the subconscious mind to make the changes lasting. We didn't give enough reasons to create the changes. Uh, 
let me give an example from uh, entertainment hypnosis. One of the things um, you really have to do when you do entertainment is to call off every suggestion. Because you don't want the lawyer going back to his office and all of a sudden the radio plays Jailhouse Rock and he jump off his chair and starts dancing because you gave him an anger in your show and you didn't call it off. Now, to be honest, I sometimes forget, especially when I do street hypnosis. Let's say I had somebody forgotten the number four. And don't call it off. The chance that it will stick is so low because I never gave the subconscious mind the reason why he has to forget the number four. It's good in an entertainment setting. He forgot the number four, but after a few hours, the suggestion is gone because the subconscious mind has no reason to keep it lasting. And that's really important in doing change work, <coughs> is give the subconscious mind reasons why the changes have to be there for the rest of their life. Yeah? Okay, so um, the 10 steps. The first step is the act of compliance. Um, a thing that, we will, that you will see all the time in my therapy room is this. I work on a regular chair, always. I don't want recliners or something else. Uh, we have a discussion in our hypnosis center. Uh, the girls, they want this chairs with recliners and oh, it's better for the client, uh, they can sit like this. I don't like it. Because when I hypnotize somebody in a chair like this, I have feedback. When they are in, in an already relaxed position in a recliner, you can't see anything. On this chair I see everything. The moment there's a minor shift in the body, I saw it in, the, in that comfy chair, you don't see it. So that's what I, I really like about just that's, that's my setting. My setting is actually like this. Do you do the same with wooden boy dresses? Yeah. Because I know Jeff Stevens does it for face to face. Yeah, I, mean, I do it as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, okay, well, when they want to wear a dress coming to me, they probably don't care <laughs> that I'm sitting there because they know they go to a therapist. Yeah. No. So, no, I don't bother. Sometimes they say that you shouldn't put the chairs, you know, face to face. And maybe side. No, I always do it like this. I want to get in their comfort zone. Okay. I want to be there. Okay. Uh, th th this style of hypnosis is really, uh, I always have problems saying this word in English. Auto direct. No, no not direct. Okay. Uh, Auto yeah. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's what I want to say. <laughs> you can. Yeah. It is and it isn't. It, it, I've done just yep. as well. And it is very, very direct. And other people I've trained with since they said they hear Jeff and me sometimes because I tend to that direct authoritarian. But it's I think it's still client centered. You're not telling them no. what they need to be. No, no, they that's are right. creating, yeah, of course. Yeah. They are creating the change themselves. So it's authoritative in its approach. In the approach, yeah, but not the not the change work is not. But it's not your judgment or my judgment, because there's some other, there's other sessions going on talking about removing the therapist's judgment and removing us from that. And there are other things that Jeff can do out of how much way to them where you don't, you don't need to know even less yeah, uh, of course, about uh, what to uh, do, but uh, uh, what the client needs. So it, it is centered in their mind, and it is them doing it. Uh, but but yes, you're being very authoritative. Yeah, in the and that, that's my style as well. But I have a lot of students who are not the, in the authoritarian style, but they can do the protocol as well. So, but they can change it. That's why I say make it your own, and that's really important with, with everything that you learn. So, the first thing in the act of compliance is I only want to know if they are following up my instructions. But most of the time, they don't notice this, that I'm testing it. So, um, let give me let give you an example. Can you sit on that chair, please? Okay. I'm a bit closer. Tested. 
He did what I asked. Yeah? Okay, thank you. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you simply give him a few <coughs> instructions. And one, the easiest one is just put your chairs a little bit too far away. I always, I always adjust it when I have another client. I go sit down, and I go sit down. I never go closer, I say, come a little bit closer. And I, I don't say, do you want to come a little bit closer? No, I say, come a little bit closer. Put your feet on the ground, put your hands on your lap. So, and they already followed three instructions, so they're good to go. I once had this lady, and she was, the first, the first thing, uh, it was also in my beginning year, months, the first warning sign was, uh, I asked her, uh, have you ever been hypnotized? She says, no, my mother-in-law was for stop smoking, uh, but I don't think it's going to work for me. She came for a stop smoking session. I said, oh, okay. Then she went to the chair and she was sitting like this. And I said, put your feet flat on the, on the floor. And she says, I'm uh, easier in relaxing like this. I said, no, put your feet flat on the ground. So at this time, I already knew that there was some, something going on, that she really wasn't ready to quit smoking. And after 15 minutes after the session, her boyfriend called me. And uh, he said, yeah, we are driving in the car now. And uh, she's uh, already smoking. I said, Okay, were the cravings so bad that she couldn't wait? No, she wanted to test it if it was still possible to smoke. <laughs> My reaction was, what did, what did she think, that it's going to explode? <laughs> so, she was clearly not ready to stop smoking. So, uh, she booked another appointment on the Saturday after that, and then she cancelled like half an hour before. So, uh, uh, but that's... Okay. Uh, Eye engagement. Uh, the, the second step is um, we just want to create some focus. So the only thing is, I said, you don't have to say it, but you can do like this. So they are looking into your eyes. You can say, look in my eyes. So that's the second step. Okay. The third step is just let me make a slow, deep breath. Uh, why? To relax them. It's the only time we do something <coughs> with relaxation. I never, and Jeff never did, use the word relaxation. The only thing that we use, the, the only step that we use the word relaxation is at the end, at the introduction. All relaxation is leaving your body. But we never use the word relaxation. For me, hypnosis is not relaxation. Huh? Why? We don't use the word relaxation. And now I will quote Jeff. He said, I never use the word relaxation because 20 minutes later I'm going to kick them out of my office. I don't want them to be relaxed. <laughs> and the point that I want to make is it's really important and it's also something that sometimes a lot of therapists go to. Like five minutes after the, the exduction, <coughs> my client is at the parking lot. I don't want them to stay in the office. Because most of the sessions are we done after the session. When they, they start asking questions again about their issue. I don't want to talk about the issue anymore. We can talk about the weather or, or, or uh, a few months ago about the World Championship football. But not about the session, not about the issue. Yeah? I have uh, this little trick to uh, make sure that they already have the suggestion to go out really fast. When I do the exduction, you know, everybody knows, as a hypnotist, that they still are in, the, in this receptive uh, state. So the moment when they open their eyes, and I'm here and my, my office desk is there, I said, you can sit there for a while. So they already know that they're not going to be there long. So one of the things that I do is I give them a um, CD. I know it's very 80s, but yeah. um, the, the reason why I give them a CD is it's, they take it home and they put it somewhere and it's my logo is on it. It's just a, a, a relaxation type meditation thing. 
I give it as a gift. So I have a reason to talk about something else. I explain how they can use the CD. Uh, they pay me and they go outside. And I think that's really important. So don't talk about the issue about the session, about, about any chance of that it's not gonna work. Don't talk about it, just kick them out. Do you mention the full session or? or yeah, and yeah, I do it after the session. I know Jeff did it. Uh, his thing was put your money on the desk. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that in Belgium. No. It's, it's a little bit different in, in every country. Uh, so the, the thing that uh, he's referring to, it's, uh, you can see it on the videos as well. Uh, when Jeff did the session, uh, people entered his uh, therapy room or whatever. Uh, and the first thing he said, put your money on the desk. His, his uh, fee was $400, but with a lifetime guarantee. So you could go, go back whatever you want. $400. And he never touched the $400. They were there always on the table. It's like, always, it's also something that's, that's really good to, to let people follow your instructions because their money is already there. But I never did this in Belgium because I'm not quite sure that, that that's a good approach in Belgium. So uh, maybe it's possible. And, and one more question, uh, the last question about the lady, which was yeah. like that. Yeah. If you could have said, uh, oh, sorry, madam, I'm, uh, I want to do a session with you. Because if she's not complying with the bid, yeah. it means that she will demonstrate her. Yeah. When, when, when the right. same thing is happening now, yeah. I kick her out of the office. For, for a very small yeah. time? Yeah, when yeah. the same thing is happening now, I don't do the session. Very good. At the beginning, Okay, you're a beginner, mm -hmm. so I did the session, but now I, I wouldn't do the session. Okay. The, moment, the moment when somebody is, the, when I have a li the little bit doubt that they want to change or they're not following my instruction, I kick them out. It, no. it is not going to work anymore. No, no, it, it's not, uh, especially with smokers, that, that's the reason why I always tell my students, <coughs> don't make your sessions too cheap, because you've got a lot of smokers, they maybe want to quit smoking, and those are the guys who go out and tell everybody that hypnosis is not working for stop smoking. So I don't want them. I only want the ones who really want the change. Yeah. Do you tell them to take a slow deep breath or do you actually do No, no, I tell them. I just want to take a slow deep breath. And no. only one time? Uh, no, once. Just one breath? Yeah, one. Uh, I, I only want to see, it's again, it's a little test. Yes. And I just want to give them a moment of relaxation, that's all. When they do like this, I correct them, of course. When it's not a slow deep breath, I correct them. And then they take another slow deep breath out. I don't keep them asking to do a slow deep breath when they are not. So remember when you have a smoker who smoked for already 50 years, the deep breath is not going to be that deep. <laughs> <laughs> be sure about that. So don't make the mistake that he's not complying. No, his lungs are gone. So it's not going to work. So, okay, then, uh, the induction. Uh, I always use instant inductions. Yeah? Even the, the if almond induction is too long for me. I, I want things going on. Uh, my favorite one is the eight word induction. Of course, this is a shock induction for, uh, everybody knows the eight word induction is like a hand drop. Just push on my hand, close your eyes, sleep. Yeah. Um, it's a shock induction, so whenever you have somebody who's not suited for a shock induction, I use an eye lock. Close your eyes. And imagine that they are stuck in the moment. You're sure, try them to open them. You see the client try, you say, sleep. Do you ever find people that follow, they be, they're very compliant all the way up to that shock induction, and then that's when they become resistant? or? Or do you find that if, they, if they're compliant all the way up, then they'll... Because I've never because had I'm a shock induction worked on me. No. <laughs> never. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's probably a hypnotist thing. Yeah. Because you know what's going to happen. That, that's sometimes a problem with being a hypnotist. Um, I wish I was hypnotized many times before, I became a hypnotist because one of my problems is I'm overthinking everything. The moment when when one of my students is hypnotizing me, I'm thinking, mm, no, he said, no, 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 he can't say that this way. I have to, I have to tell him later. They can't. Say, no. When somebody else is hypnotizing me using an entire different system, I said, hmm, that 
that was a good quote. I'm going to use that also. <laughs> and, and, and the hypnotist is, is, is analyzing it. And that's maybe the problem that, and you're waiting for that. Probably most of the time it's not a shock for you or because you know what's going on. So that might be the problem. I never had clients with, and my instant inductions, they work always. That's my mindset. My mindset is when I say sleep, they go. When you don't have a mindset, when you say sleep, they go. Don't start with instant inductions because when you, one of the, and the next step is really important when, when you do instant inductions. And that's sometimes the fault uh, people are making. So the next step is the simple deepeners. And for me, it's really important to say immediately after you say the word sleep or whatever you want to use it. It's not, it's not necessary to, to use the word sleep even with an instant induction. There are a lot of hypnotists that don't want to use the word sleep anymore. You can say something like loose or, or, or boom. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, not that, it's not that much important. For me, the intention is the most important thing. When you have the intention to hypnotize somebody, that's more important than the wording. I just had a thought, you know, when you have your dog and you tell your dog to drop it, what if you just tell someone drop it? Yeah, why not? <laughs> drop. Yeah, okay. Drop it or drop down. Yeah. But the most important thing is immediately after the word sleep, after the ending of your induction, you have to start with a deepener. So, and I know it's, it's especially when you're a beginner or when you learn doing instant inductions. Yeah? They do an instant induction and then they start looking. Is it working? And they forget to say the word to something like deeper. The only thing you have to do, the problem with instant induction is, is, is quite simple. The quicker you go into hypnosis, the quicker you come out of hypnosis. It's a natural response. So when you do an instant induction, the word deeper has to follow immediately. So sleep deeper, deeper, deeper. And whenever you don't know what to say, just say deeper. Yeah? And when you don't do this, they come out. Of course, they, you give them the chance to come out. So sleep deeper, deeper, deeper. The deeper you go, the better you feel, and so on. So, don't hesitate. I know it's a little bit confronting when you do an instant induction and you do the sleep and then you want to look, is this really working? And when you do that, it's it's not going to work. Yeah. I used an instant induction not too long back. I said the word deeper, which is fine, but I find that after 10, 10 minutes or whatever it was, the lady was starting to come out of it. And so I had to go deeper, deeper, deeper just to bring her right, right back out. So is it normal for this, this particular induction, let's say, or to last just a very short period of time? Or how deep no. does the person go? I don't know because my session is over after 10 minutes. <laughs> 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 no, uh, no. When I do street hypnosis, um, I have people sometimes hypnotize for 30 minutes after an instant, instant induction. Yeah. But, um, because of there are they are following some more deepness in this protocol, uh, but of course when you do street hypnosis, there's a lot of fractionation going on because every time they open their eyes, they do a skit and they go back into hypnosis, so they stay there. So no, I don't I don't think it's related to the instant induction. So maybe there there was something going on in, in the way of work that you did that the client was maybe resisting. Um, I don't think it's instant induction. Okay, so really important, uh, we use some simple deepeners, just counting from 3 to 0, very short deepener. And then we come to the step that we're going to talk about later, the one, the one I'm going to explain entirely. Uh, so the boilerplate. I'm going to talk later about it, so I'm going to explain it fully, like I would do in the, in the training. Then we go to a complex deepener. Uh, the complex deepener is to give them an experience. No, first is to take them even deeper, of course, but also to give them an experience. I always do two complex deepeners. I do the fractionation. I love fractionation. But that's, of course, about my, my entertainment background, of course. I really like to do sleep. So open your eyes, sleep. Um, and the second thing is I want to give them an experience. I don't use convincers anymore. And that sounds maybe a little bit strange for an entertainer, um, but I have a good reason for it. And um, Jeffrey changed it at the, the end of his life. He also started not using the convincers anymore. Uh, 
because with the, with the passing through the zero, one of the complex deepeners uh, in this protocol, you give them an experience. They, they, they enjoy something, they experience something. And for me, that's more important than using a convincer. Um, a few years ago, I had a girl sitting on my desk, and I was, at that time, I, I still did the pre-talk. I don't do pre-talks anymore. They get a video now, because I really was getting tired of explaining the subconscious mind and everything, <coughs> yeah? And so now they get a video, and they get all the information up front. It's way better. Whenever you want to see my uh, pre-talk, send me an email. I recorded it in English. I don't have English-speaking clients in Belgium, but uh, when I do trainings, people ask me, can, can we see your uh, intake video? I say, yes, you can, but it's in Dutch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I recorded it in English. So uh, send me an email, and I will send you the link. So, uh, yeah, just one minute. Um, so uh, the lady was sitting there, and uh, I was explaining it. Yeah, whenever you're hypnotized, you can hear everything I say. And she said, yeah, I know, I know, I know. My brother was here last week, and the entire session, he was thinking. I said, yeah, and what was he thinking? What bullshit is this? <laughs> I'm never gonna be a non-smoker, and this is 150 euros. Is lost. I said uh, yes, and yeah, he's a non-smoker now, <laughs> because otherwise I wasn't here. So the same guy, he did my seven-day training. He's, he has his own insurance office. He never hypnotized anybody, but he really wanted to do the training. He's still telling people I don't think I was hypnotized, ever. <laughs> but I know it. I know it works. So when you when you try a convincer with a guy like that never work. He, you can't stuck him to the floor you, because he's analyzing everything. And when I did the convincer with him, he would be sure that it's not working. And what happened now? He went out of my office. It was a Friday night. He went out with friends and off to have a beer. After three hours in the pub, one of his friends mentioned, hey, you never went outside to go and smoke a cigarette. And his reply immediately was, oh no, I'm a non-smoker. And at that time he said, oh, this shit is working. <laughs> so, he was convinced by his own words. Mm -hmm. So that's why I want him to give him experience. Um, we use the swan, or burns the swan. I think everybody knows it. Uh, no? I think, but, no? <laughs> This one? He's here. Ask him. <laughs> I'm a trainer for Bob Burns as well, so uh, in, uh, in Belgium. Uh, I use this one. Uh, I don't do suitability tests anymore. I, I uh, use this one as a convincer also at uh, the start of the session. So that I combine the Jeffrey Stevens protocol and the swan a lot. So I, I actually don't need a convincer in the session anymore, but, but even before I knew this one, I didn't do it anymore. Because the passing through the zero, uh, deeper gives people an experience. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was a question over there. I'm uh, just wondering if you do, do you send them your pre-talk in advance? In advance. Yeah. You, so you don't sit them down in a room and watch a video. When they didn't uh, see the video at home, I just open my laptop, so play, and I go outside. Yeah. Because it's not only the fact that I'm that I'm bored of doing the the pre-talk, but I know, and that that's that's normal. When you start doing your pre-talk, you forget things. Because sometimes we as a hypnotist, we, for, for us, everything is, is, is normal. Uh, so we, we don't mention it anymore. So now my pre-talk on the, on the video is like five minutes. So I go outside and going they want... Huh? I, I don't have to smoke yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, and I, I think that's, uh, everything is in now. I don't forget anything now because the video is playing. And but most of, most of the... the People watch it at home. And they get it by the, we have an automatic system and they get it. And are most of them pretty compliant about actually, you check with them, have you watched the video and most of them say yes? Yeah, yeah. and I, I ask a question, <laughs> if they don't know, then, then I know that they didn't watch the video. No, no most of them, uh, yeah, they, they, they did watch the video. No. Was the question here? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The swan is a variation of what's taught. How do you do the swan? What is this one? This one is, is, uh, is a protocol of, it's, it's like uh, idolatory responses, but uh, 
It's, it's, it's an entire different thing. Well, I know, I I how, are you one, use, how are you using it? In, in this? Yes, is it, is it user, as a convincer? Or? No, I, I, uh, I start my, my session with installing the swamp, and yeah. people, I give them an experience. As, and I use it sometimes in the session as well to, the change to, check, yeah, yeah. to check with the subconscious mind that the, the changes uh, are starting to make. Well, Anybody that doesn't know that Bob, uh, Bob Bird Swan just Google it. He's yeah. got multiple videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go and see him. He's here. He's yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just quickly, you said that there's mm -hmm. always two things you do with the complex deep learners. You always do fractionation. I do fractionation and a passing through the zero. Yeah. Passing, passing through the zero is an. Uh, it's it's actually it's counting from five to zero and give them. Um, uh, I can't explain it because it's going to take me one hour to explain this one. Um, but it, it's um, I think I don't think it's it's uh, it was uh, created by Jeff himself. He, he adapted it, of course. But I think I'm not sure. I will look it up. But I think it's called Minions. I'm not sure. Or Jonathan Chase, maybe. I don't know. Philip, you know. I think Jeff had it directly from Jeff. From Jonathan Chase, and then he adapted it, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh. So, uh, okay, then we have the golden box, and that's where the change work is uh, happening. So, uh, it's really direct. So, let me tell you about uh, this lady. She had a tick. Is, is that how you say it in English? A tick? Yeah. Uh, she was always. Uh, playing with her tongue, always touching her teeth, and she came actually for a stop smoking session because I uh, I made her uh, sister a non-smoker. So uh, she walked into my uh, my office and she says, yes, "I want to become a non-smoker, but actually I will also have another problem." And she <coughs> pointed me to the tick. Can we work on that? I say yes. Why not? So the only thing I actually did was telling the subconscious mind to mm -hmm. stop doing it. Mm -hmm. Really direct. I just hypnotize her the moment we come to the golden box. We always start the golden box with saying, I'm talking to you now, the subconscious mind. And I start talking to the subconscious mind and said, hey, you did a great job. She doesn't like it anymore. Stop it. Like in the videos. <laughs> Stop it. I give the subconscious mind some reasons and that's it. So learning doing the golden box is also a structure. Yeah? So the moment you know how to create a golden box, you never have need of a script anymore. So that's the, the good thing of this protocol. Um, and one of the big, the most important thing, I already uh, told it a time ago, that <coughs> give the subconscious mind reasons to make the change. And the most easiest way to get this is whenever somebody explained his problem to me, I also give me some reasons why you don't want that, that thing anymore. So give me a few reasons or, or the bad things of being a non -sm uh, smoker. Give me some negatives of being 100 kilos. Yeah. I don't use the negatives. But I always also ask for the positive. What, what would be different for you if you are a non-smoker? What would be different for you if you want to go on the plane without having fear? If you are not afraid of spiders anymore? If you're not allergic to seafood anymore? My mother was allergic to seafood. She dropped down after eating an oyster or a lobster. Jeffrey did a session with her. Now she's eating everything. We are not happy because at Christmas we used to get her oysters. Not anymore. <laughs> so, not good. No. Um, so you have to give the subconscious mind some reasons. So ask the client, give me some positives you would have when your goal is reached. And they give you something. And this is also a little test, especially with smokers. When they can't give you reasons, they're probably not ready. I had this guy and he came in to my office, a uh, non-smoking uh, session, and I give me some negatives of being a smoker. My wife is always nagging. 
I was waiting. <laughs> Nothing else came. I said, money else? Nope. <laughs> okay, give me some positives. My wife stops nagging. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nothing came. Even not the money. <laughs> so, it was also in my begin years. Uh, now I would have a conversation with him and probably don't do the session. Uh, like three days later, I had his wife on the phone. <laughs> He says, yeah, he's already a smoker. He, no, he only, he only quits for like three hours. I said, yeah, first, your husband is my client. I don't discuss it with you. Then uh, I said, can I talk to your husband? Yeah, he's not here. So she was talking to me without a husband present. So he called me back and uh, I asked him, yeah, was it really so bad that you had to start smoking again after three hours? And uh, I, I think, uh, with the feedback you gave me that you, you're not ready to stop smoking. And then he gave the telephone back to his wife and he says, I hear him saying, he says, um, I don't want to quit smoking. And the wife came back, oh, he has to want it. <laughs> I said, yes. So I, I go and check my, my, uh, my system and then I saw that the appointment was made with her email address with her telephone number. So what happened? The guy probably came home from his work and she says, on a Tuesday, 11 o'clock, you have to go to the hypnotist because I'm tired of you smoking. Not gonna work. So now I uh, don't do the session anymore. So um, direct, uh, yeah, direct speaking to the subconscious mind, just telling, informing the subconscious mind of the problem and telling what the goal is. So that, that's all what we do. Yeah. Uh, just real quick, when you talked about the woman with the switch, was it enough to just tell the subconscious that she doesn't want it anymore? No. And that's the reason. Okay. It was enough. No. Yeah. Yeah. A clarification. Do you give them a positive reason why they want, or have them give you a positive reason why they want to quit, or a negative reason of what they're doing? I, I always ask first for the negative. I always ask, what are the negatives you have with this, with this, with this issue? Yeah? And then I ask, give me the positive you would have when the issue is gone. And sometimes, because sometimes they, they never experience being without the issue. But sometimes they don't, they don't know what the, they, they can imagine the positives. And what I do is sometimes I just turn over some negatives and, say, and, then, and use them also. I never use the negatives, but I turn them in positives. Yeah. Are, are you asking for that in a pre-talk? Yeah, that's in the pre-talk. Yeah. Yeah. So they uh, actually they, they get my intake form, uh, also sent with the video, and on the pre-take uh, intake form is only the question, uh, as I said before, uh, explain your issue in two words, and give me the goal in two words, and some changes you would like to make to change your. To, to reach your goal, that's it. The only questions there are on the intake form. And that's and the only thing that I ask when they are in my office is give me the negatives and give me the positives. So, uh, yeah. Have you had, um, used this for illnesses or physical issues? Uh, actually, we use it for everything. Yeah. Everything that, that, you can use it for everything. Uh, to be honest, at this moment, we, we still, we're still using it for weight loss as well. But most of the time, um, we try to get our clients in the virtual gastric band program. And the only reason is because most, and especially women, sorry, uh, most of them don't understand it. So what we do with the weight loss session is quite simple. Uh, telling the subconscious mind, until now, you kept her on 100 kilograms. I don't know how it is in your uh, measurement. Uh, and now, and now I want you, uh, I want to, to make all the changes to bring her to 80 kilograms. But at that time, the subconscious mind has to be, do the work. And the problem is that it is not like on a night, done. So with men, most of the time it's no problem because they go out of the therapy room and they're not thinking about it anymore. But women, I tell them, it can take up to one month before any changes are occurring. And they, in the therapy room, they say, yeah, 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 no problem. And then they go out 
And after two weeks, they, they sent me an email. Hey, I was at your office, but um, yeah, I'm still at that same weight. Okay, tell me some changes. Oh, there were some changes. I'm, I'm, I'm exercising more, blah blah. But they don't have the patience, and and sometimes they start doing something else. They start combining it with the diet or combining it with drinking some shakes or doing some other things and that's not working anymore because the subconscious mind gets confused mm. and it's done. So that's why we most of the time we, we try to get them in the virtual gastric band program because then they have to follow up some instructions and they are more used to it. So that's especially because of the fact that women and, and it, with most of the uh, issue with this People seeing a hypnotist did so many other things before, especially women coming in for a weight loss program. They are experts in, in doing all different kinds of diets. So they sometimes going back to that. Uh, and, and then I, I'm there telling them, yeah, so now you go outside, your subconscious mind is on the job. So the only thing have, that you have to do is follow your feeling. Ah, so. Uh, yeah, but uh, I already bought some shakes because I want to combine this. No, no, because I don't think your subconscious mind is going to lead you to, to the shakes. Huh? Ah, yeah, okay, yeah, no, so I'm not going to, but, uh, but, but they were expensive, the shakes. Yeah, okay, <laughs> but you have to make a choice. So uh, sometimes that's, that's uh, a problem. Like for pain and things like pain, that? Pain, yeah, uh, we use it for pain. Uh, I, I, uh, I cured the guy with migraine. He has to go to the hospital every month to get on a Baxter. I did one session and his migraine is gone. I, I, I had a very insomnia problem, a very big insomnia problem, and Jeffrey did it in one session with me. Also my, uh, my headaches, they are... The only thing with pain is, um, of course, you, know, you have to know something about the pain, don't remove it when, when it's a signal and everything, uh, but the, with, with my headaches, uh, Jeffrey uh, installed that my subcon subconscious mind can still give me a sign whenever I'm overdoing it because it was like tension headaches I had. Uh, and now sometimes I get a sign and I know, okay, take it easy. It's the same thing with my mother, my mother, her uh, allergy. Uh, I, I did a lot of allergies already. Whenever the allergy is not, um, uh, whenever you don't have it when you're born, you can remove it, quite simple. So, but you always have to install a security because sometimes there is a problem with a certain, a certain thing in the food or whatever. So after the, the session Jeffrey did with my mom for the uh, seafood, now she can eat everything. But the only thing that she don't like anymore are scampis. So probably the scampis were the problem. But the subconscious mind over exaggerated and gave her, and she really fell down. It was eating, bang. So, and now she doesn't have the problem anymore, but the subconscious mind still gives the signal, and the signal is that she doesn't like scampis anymore. So for her, it's okay because she doesn't like them, and now she can eat oysters, lobsters, everything. So that's, yeah. I'm not sure what you mean by the golden box. Is that like golden handcuffs, or is it some other? No, it's for just a name. Just, yeah. just the name for getting. That is the name of the, the step where we are doing the change yeah. work. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It used to be called the black box, but we changed it to the golden box. Okay. Is in the golden box a little bit like a six step reframe? Sounds a little bit like that. No, no, no. You're, you're really going. Actually, it's just a conversation with the subconscious mind, a, a one way conversation. You're just telling the subconscious mind what you want. Yeah. Or just to, to stop it. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, secondly, on the weight loss, understanding that you, for the reasons that you use the gastric band, are the components of this, like the, the induction and the boilerplate that you do use with that, the weight loss protocol that you're using? So, when, when I do a, a virtual gastric band, the only thing that I change is this stuff. So, I do the entire protocol, I, use, I do the, the, the first steps, and the only thing I change is the working, the change work. Okay. So, I use the, for those who know the virtual gastric band, I use the, the, the walk through the hospital and everything. Okay. I do it here. Okay, so you do the induction and everything. Uh, everything the same. The everything the, the same. Golden box would be. I, yeah, so I change the golden box, okay. but I do everything the same. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned allergies, birth allergies. Can you heal anything that you have allergies? I never did it.
didn't, and I, me was over, all, also all the time told that you can't change an LRV when you're born with it. I don't know why, but no. I, I think the, the... It's biochemistry. Yeah, probably. But you change the biochemistry I think, I, I, I'm quite sure you can, you can make it more comfortable. I'm quite sure you can do that. But, to be honest, I never met somebody with a born, a born energy. Yeah, but that's not, that's not my problem. No, it's, it's 99% of the allergies are not, not uh, my own. No. They mo mo most of the allergies they come from some. Somebody is eating an apple. Is uh, is is all? He, uh, I don't know how you say it in English. Uh, Choked up. Yeah, the, I mean the, the, the apple gets stuck in his throat and he starts. Uh, he's all, almost dying. Yeah, and, and yeah, and two months later he has an uh, uh, allergy for for apples. And, Probably, and most of the time, probably also for the, the blossoms and everything. So that's easy to change, of course. Okay, um, then there is um, another step, then the magic mirror. The magic mirror is to give people a good feeling. Yeah? Uh, Jeffrey used to say people are coming to you to feel good, to feel well, and to be happy. So he created something to give people that feeling. And then of course there is the exduction. The exduction uh, for me it's, I do my exduction always pretty firm. It's, it's, it's like I build it up, yeah? it's a one to five count. Really build it. I never, I never do something like uh, the moment you're ready, open your eyes, and you're. No, I want to give them something because, because of the fact that I'm going to kick them out of my office five minutes later, I really want to go them, to go them really good out of hypnosis, so they're not like off into trance in their car. So I really want to wake them up, give them a good, clear feeling, a good feeling when they come out of the hypnosis. Uh, and that's really important. Um, my wife, I told you, she's a super, super, super somnambulist. She tends to stay in hypnosis. She's like this, she comes out, she looks at you and she says, okay, don't care, I want to go back. So sometimes with, with, you have to check if people are really out of the hypnosis, especially with this kind of, of work. Because you do an instant induction, you do deepeners, you give them a, an experience. It's short but powerful. So also the extraction has to be powerful. Okay? I just come from uh, one to five. There's a lot of wording. I do see it in the demonstration. Now, so, um, I'm going to explain, explain the entire boilerplate step because this step you can take out of the protocol and use in every approach that you're doing. For every client you're hypnotizing, you can use this. Um, what are we going to uh, do with the boilerplate is all the challenges, noises, uh, vibrations, whatever. When you're working in a therapy room, most of the time it's a controlled environment. But all different things could happen. Uh, when you're working close to a big street, there can be some noise from cars, somebody can ring your doorbell, uh, things like that. Uh, and you, you want them to work in your favor. Yeah? The noises, just let them work in your favor. Uh, you will see in a minute how you do that. And also, control how the subject responds to these challenges. You want to control everything. I'm, I want to be totally in control. That's why I, I'm sitting in their comfort zone as well. That's why we use the authoritarian way. Okay, uh, your own mistakes or events. You could start coughing. 
uh, or uh, sleazing or whatever. I once had, uh, I was also in the beginning uh, years, I was still working at my office. My secretary was not there, so it was at my home actually. Um, and I was in the middle of a session and the doorbell rang. But I was waiting for a delivery. I was home alone. My secretary was not, not working, my wife was at her own business. So I really had to open the door. So I just did. I did the boiler, the boiler plate was already done. So I sat a few times deeper, I went to the door, I opened the door, signed, go back, and I continue my session. The client never asked about it. He never mentioned it after the session. So that's all the good things that you can do. Whatever, anything can happen when you have done a good boiler plate. Um, there's a super suggestion in it and an auto deep burner. So, uh, so you don't have to write this all down because you get you get uh, PowerPoint. The first sentence of the boilerplate is starting now. Every sound, every voice you hear, inside and out, makes it easier and easier to focus on my voice and follow my instructions even easier. So, the first thing we want to take care of is every sound. Yeah, it could be many sounds. Every voice you hear. And now comes the trick, inside and out. So, this means three things. Yeah, exactly. So, every voice, my voice of course. Other voices maybe in the hallway, or wherever. Uh, so, from outside the therapy room. But the inside is also going to the self-talk, to that little guy telling in your head, am I really hypnotized? <laughs> huh? I'm not sleeping. Is this really gonna work? So, just the, the self-talk is also a voice. So, just let that voice work for you. So from now on, every voice, every sound you hear, inside and outside, will make it easier. And now we're gonna embed a comment to focus only on my voice and follow my instructions even easier. And this is also important. The, the even easier. Yeah? So actually you're, you're now saying you're already following my instructions, but it's gonna become easier. So you're doing a good job, but it's gonna become easier. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing with feelings. And everything you feel, inside and outside, makes it easier and easier to focus, again the common, only on my voice and follow my instructions even easier. Okay? Now we're gonna cover our own mistakes. And absolutely nothing I do or say will disturb you in any way whatsoever. So, if you have to open the door, open the door. If you have to take a phone call, no, don't. Yeah. <laughs> Switch your phone off. So, absolutely nothing I do or say will disturb you in any way whatsoever. So, you have to start coughing, no problem. I once had this uh, girl and she was my therapy room, we are doing the session, I always ask to switch off their telephone, but most of the time I, I don't ask, I don't care. Uh, and she did it, but not in the right way, and her cell phone starts ringing. I just said, the sound of your cell phone will make you go deeper and deeper. And then, the only thing you have to hope is that they call her a lot. <laughs> they go deeper, no problem. So use it. But actually you don't need it anymore. Whenever you have done your boilerplate, you don't need it anymore. No? So everything can happen, no problem. Rob? Yeah. I'm sorry, if I could ask you a quick question about that, that last slide. Um, I, I don't know in Europe and Belgium if you have any issues of therapists doing anything inappropriate. I know, you know, in the States there you know, can be some concerns. So 
and nothing, absolutely nothing I do or will say, disturb you. No, no. And I'm, I'm just kind of, you know, here I would no. be a little concerned about saying that. It has, have you run into anything like no, that? No, never. No. From the no. standpoint of the client resisting or? Well, no. yeah. yeah. I, 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 mean, I, 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 I know where she's coming from, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be a problem. The first thing is it, it, it's already in the hypnosis, yeah? so no, but it, it's only one sentence. Nobody going to react on this, and they're not going to open their eyes and say, "Oh no, you can't do whatever you want." <laughs> I don't see that happening. No, I, there are a lot of a lot of uh, hypnotists using this, in, uh, also here in the United States. So I don't see I don't see that problem. No. Well, that was Jeffrey's and he is from here. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> it was created here, so <laughs> no, no, I don't see the problem. I think part of it is making it your home, and when I, I didn't get to meet Jeff, but I talked to him on the phone, and he, he kind of exuded the attitude of, do it my way until you know it. Yeah. Then, make it your own. No. And in, earlier in the boiler play, I always trip over the words, because I don't think the grammar is completely the Queen's English, it's not an uh, where it puts some of the that, that, You know it's for a purpose. Yeah, so I- it's to, I get, it's to get the comment like, in it. I rearrange the setting because I can't say it without tripping over it. Yeah, but so then, you, have then you have to change it, of course. I have to say it so I can say it. Yep. So, I mean, with this one, in the climate that there is in North America now, with all the, you know, you know, minor wording changes is not going to screw up the subconscious of the guy, right? Like the client, and is the client a woman or a man actually affects that perception, as strange as that is, right? But, and dropping the word do covers most of it, I think. Yeah. You know, when you want to cover it. Nothing, nothing, I do, yeah, nothing I say. Yeah. Or, you know. Not, or, or, yeah, nothing I do. Not within just boilerplate, yeah. but I've had other mentors say things like, they'll tell clients in the pre-talk yeah. that if they hear them shuffle paper or look up a book, they're checking something because they want to make sure they give them a good experience. I mean, like, you can find ways to communicate yeah. your intent of doing the best. But I think the purpose of it being in the in here is to, for the, for the, 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 to remove the fear that a cough yeah, uh, of course, and, and, and any other action that you should do, going out to open the door. I don't, I don't, I don't think you have to overthink this. Just, I don't, I don't think anybody's going to care about you saying this. It's just a distraction. Though. No, no. Yep. I was just going to say. I think the other thing is that that would all be covered under the. Um, but basically, the, you're not going to do anything in hypnosis that you wouldn't do in the real world. Or have, I don't know. No, you're right yeah, if you believe that, because that's not true. <laughs> 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 yeah. Don't say to your client, of course, but um, <laughs> I don't believe that. Okay, starting right now, whatever I say to you, no matter how ridiculous or absurd it may sound, will become your total reality. Whatever I say, you see, you see. Whatever I say, you hear, you hear. Whatever I say, you feel, you feel. And whatever I say, you can do, you can do. It's a super suggestion. <laughs> as they're using in every state show or street hypnosis or whatever. But the moment you give this suggestion, especially the last thing is the most important one. Because you're talking to the subconscious mind already, of course. Yeah. And in a bit, you're going to ask the subconscious mind to make changes. So you're already saying, whatever I say, you can do, you can do. Yeah? So you're already instructing, instructing the subconscious mind to do whatever you ask them to do. Okay? So this is something you can choose to use or not. I use it all the time. Especially when I do entertainment, and it's more even more important. But also for uh, like the passing through the zero, the, the, the deeper, there's a lot of experience in it. And if you already say whatever I say, you see, you see whatever I say, you feel, you feel, then they get have a, they're gonna have a better experience anyway. Starting right now, every breath you take takes you deeper and deeper. Because the deeper you go, the better you feel, the better you feel, the deeper you go. It's actually unfolded deeper. Yeah. 
So it's a loop. When everything is good, your client doesn't stop breathing. When he does, you have a problem. <laughs> so, so it's an, it's an auto lever. So uh, this is the end of the boilerplate. Anybody, any questions about this? You mentioned that you could email us the PDF. Is there, yep. do we sign up for that? Or uh, at the end there is the a end? link, okay. there's a link. And then, yeah, you go to the link, fill it out, and you get it immediately. Yeah. So, um, sounds, noises, feeling, your own mistakes, super suggestion, and the auto deepener. Okay, question. I'm just wondering if you can expand a bit on what the magic mirror is. Um, yeah, the magic mirror is um, giving him a good feeling. Actually, is having to look in, in a mirror and uh, projecting some good uh, and positive um, things about the person in the mirror. Do they go back to like an experience like the time? No, 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 it's, it's, it's shorter. It's, it's just like saying, uh, uh, now um, you're, you're using the name again. Uh, uh, now Vicky, you're, uh, look, uh, look in the mirror. The person you see when you look in the mirror is a person of word. Uh, as a person with a lot of uh, confidence, uh, with a lot of, uh, she's a, a beautiful person inside and outside, and you know it's true because you are the person you see when you look in the mirror. But that's it. And you do it twice with different, different uh, positive uh, aspects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, questions. <laughs>